Now you can see the male at the top of the screen there and you'll see him go to fertilize some of the eggs in a moment and it is very quick. There it is right there. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be following a Neal Amprologus Lalipi spawn all the way from spawning to hatching to free swimming and then to 40 days old. So let's get into this week's video. And here's the Neal Amprologus Lalipi breeding pair. You see the female at the entrance of the cave and you can see how large her belly was. She was spawning before I started filming obviously and her belly was a little bit larger than this. She was absolutely full of eggs. Now you can see the male at the top of the screen there and you'll see him go to fertilize some of the eggs in a moment and it is very quick. There it is right there. That is how quickly the male will fertilize the eggs that the females just laid. And he'll continue to do this for the next few minutes, uh, about an hour or so, I believe. Uh, me and Adam were working on getting the tanks prepared to drill when this was happening. So I wasn't really paying close attention to everything that was happening in this tank because we had a lot of work to do that day with emptying out all the tanks, disconnecting the stands, all the power cords, all the airline hosing, and moving those tanks outside to be drilled and then moving them back inside. So it was a very busy day. And it just so happened that this pair decided to spawn on that day. But thankfully I captured a lot of their spawning activity. And you can see the female just staying in the cave there. The male's approaching and uh, she continues to lay some eggs and he might have a go at fertilizing some more soon. And they just kind of hang around and they just keep doing this uh, for, yeah, I assume about half an hour to an hour. I uh, wasn't, again, wasn't tracking how long they were spawning for. I just let the camera roll basically while we continued to work. So the male kind of was going to have a go there at fertilizing some eggs. He really didn't. Female's continuing to lay her eggs though. And you can see her laying when she does that, I mean, she goes upside down and she kind of rubs her belly against the roof of that cave. She's laying eggs in a line there. And yeah, the male, I don't know how they're communicating to each other right now, but they must be. And uh, the male knows what's going on. And he'll come in and have another swipe at uh, spawning with the female and fertilizing some more eggs. And there you go. That's the male fertilizing the eggs. That's all it takes. And they just keep on doing that. Uh, it's as quickly as that. I, I, I never caught this on film before. Uh, I thought actually the male would be in the cave with the female the entire time, uh, not simply swimming by and uh, fertilizing the eggs the way he does in this footage. But that's the way uh, Neil Amprologus Le Lupi spawn. So it's been 24 hours or just past 24 hours since this breeding pair of Neolamprologus Leilupi have spawned. You can see the female near her eggs at the entrance of that cave there. And I just want you guys to notice her swimming uh, behavior and the way, or the way she just turned over there, checking up on the eggs, making sure they're clean of fungus and any pests. And she'll pick at them throughout the day. And I just wanted to point out the way she swims here. As you can see, she's got a bit of an odd swimming behavior uh, that is, she's not actually swimming, she's actually circulating water over the eggs. She's oxygenating her eggs at the underside of that cave. So she does that continuously for the next three days and she's been doing it for approximately 24 hours now, uh, tending to her eggs. And you can see she's always looking up at them, rolling over, uh, picking at them, making sure there's no fungus on them. And yeah, she'll just continue to fan her eggs like you see here. Very good mother she is. She's raised so many Leilupi fry for me. And uh, yeah, it's just amazing to watch. Uh, and uh, luckily again, uh, like her past maybe three, four, maybe even five spawns, she spawned at this cave and I'm able to document it really well. At the third day when these eggs start to hatch, she'll assist those eggs to hatch and she'll more than likely will move them to the back of this rock just to the right of it. And uh, she has another little cave area there. That's what she's done in the past, so I suspect she'll do that again. I just want to show you guys what Le Lupi Care is like 24 hours after they have spawned. Hey guys, so I'm filming this on my mobile phone today because I wanted to show you guys the eggs and they're in an awkward position to film with my DSLR. They actually are easier to film on my mobile phone because of the angle we have to look through the glass at. So, 
This is 48 hours after these guys have spawned. And like I say in all my videos when I film my Neo Lampo Legacy Loopy on my mobile phone, they aren't this orange. This mobile phone saturates orange and yellow uh, colors for some reason. But anyway, let's have a look at the eggs underneath that cave. You can see all of the eggs there, there's heaps. And I'm sorry the angle isn't that great, but they loopy have dug quite a high mound at the front of the aquarium. You can see them there. All the eggs, there's heaps. Massive spawn. So I'm really pleased about that, obviously. And yeah, these guys have been without fry for about a month now. So it's well and truly their time to have a spawn. And uh, now she's looking after her eggs really well. And there she goes, feeding the oxygenated water over them. Great. It's a really great mum. And yeah, they'll be able to raise this massive clutch of fry together in this tank, in peace and quiet without any predators preying on them or harming them. There you go guys, it's 48 hours in. I suspect that they're gonna hatch tomorrow. So guys, I've just come into the fish room to turn the lights off for the night. And I was just having a little peek at the eggs and noticed that some seem to have hatched. Now, I looked a little bit closer into the pit and you can see some eggs are beating away. They've hatched. Uh, I was expecting them to hatch tomorrow but you can see some have hatched already. The female may have helped some of those fry break free of their egg casing because there are some egg casings still attached to the cave. You can see it looks like a kind of an opaque, almost looks like the eggs are fungicides but that's the egg casing and I'm assuming over the next few hours more are going to hatch into tomorrow and uh, she's going to be a busy girl. So next morning and we can see underneath the cave there are no more eggs so I presume they've all hatched. There's the female and she's pointing right at where her babies are now. So if I can hold the camera still, this is my mobile phone camera. I zoom in, got to see all the wriggling fry. I presume there are more than that hidden deep in the cave. You can see them all beating away. You can see all the wriggling fry. Since this is day three, like I expected, pretty much 72 hours after they spawned. It's pretty fast though, don't you think? Like from spawning to hatching, three days, it's all it takes. Incredible. So mum's staying close to her babies. Dad is <laughs> just hiding, because I've just turned the lights on on this tank. It'll come out eventually. So they'll absorb this yolk sac over the next week, pretty much. And I'll start to feed them baby brine shoot probably on day four or five just to ensure if there are any faster growers that they're going to get some food. I'll also feed them live microworms, which are even smaller than baby brine tree. I'll be giving them two types of food and that will help their survival rate. There you go. Day three. Okay guys, it's the next day. Uh, the fry are now clinging <laughs> to the underside of the cave. So fry, cichlid fry, uh, when they're born, they have a sort of a sticky, I believe, like a membrane or something attached to their head, and that enables them to stick to surfaces, and that's what these guys are using here. So you can see their yolk sacs, it's still absorbing them. You'll see them moving around, beating away. Little guys on the sand bed as well, beating away, <laughs> and. Here comes mum, she's doing a fantastic job. Incredible. There are loads in here. And again, I believe there are heaps still underneath that rock, wherever she's placed them. It's here to her tending those eggs. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, she just moved one. 
picks them up in her mouth, moves them where she wants them. Look at that, eh? Incredible. Okay, so it's the next day. So I believe this is the third day that these guys have been uh, wiggling fry. You can see there are a lot of fry on the sand bed. Wriggling away, I can just make out some of the eyeballs. You can still see there are loads of wriggling fry still attached to the underside of the cave. Now, this is the very first time that she's kept her fry at the front of this cave. So I'm very lucky, very fortunate to be able to film this for you guys. Because so normally she moves into the back of the cave once the fry hatch. But on this instance, she's kept them at the front. So very lucky to be able to see it, document it. Amazing. All beating away. And today, I just happened to sell 200 Leilupi fry to the wholesaler. So pretty special occasion. These guys are the next generation. So it's the next day, and she's moved some of the fry around. Some are still on the sand bed, and some are on the cave still. And you can see where she's gone now, where she usually moves them to. So I suspect she's already moved some fry to that area where she is now. She always moves them there, usually. She's taken a sweet time moving these guys. Uh, they're usually moved over to this side of the rock by this stage. Uh, but she hasn't done that yet. Uh, or had, she potentially has started moving them over there now because that pit wasn't dug out yesterday. So the usual behavior of moving them to the other side of the rock has begun. Great parents these guys are. Beautiful fish. Love these guys. Hey guys, it's two days after I filmed the last video. I didn't film yesterday basically because there hasn't been much change. As you can see, fry still have their yolk sacs and they're stuck to the underside of the cave. Now, I suspect, like I said in the other video, that she's moved some of her fry over here. Oh, you can see some on the sand bed. There you go. On the sand bed, right there. Squeezing them in. See their little tails wiggling around. Their eyes. So yeah, she's she's moved some fry, like the past spawns, to the other side of the rock. Don't know why she does that. Her instinct is to do it. But you can see there are fry under that cave as well. Wiggling around. I'm sorry guys, it's hard to film at this angle. You can see they've built up the sand on the front pane of glass quite high. So we're fortunate to be able to see it at all, really. So she's a good mama looking after her babies. Let's put the spotlight on. Let's show the fry a bit better. There are heaps there. She's got them in a tight tight grouping they extend into the shadow it's bumping up the exposure so you can see them a bit better uh, massive amount of fry it's one huge spawn and we've still got a heap of them underneath that cave that she hasn't moved over it's amazing She's doing a good job, looking after her babies. It's the proud parents, and they aren't that orange in reality, this camera. I say it all the time when I, have, when I film them, I have to say it. It saturates yellow coloration. They are a beautiful color, but they're not that orange. <clears throat> A 
I wish they were though. <laughs> Incredible. They come up so good on this camera. Okay guys, I've just turned the light on this aquarium. It's about 24 hours later. You can see all the fry on the sand bed. All those little eyeballs staring back. I think they've absorbed the yolk sac. So what I'm going to do now is pop in some live microworms and these guys will potentially have their first feed of their lives. So I'm going to do that now and we'll see what happens. Okay, so you can see the live microworms in the water column. All those little white dots against the dark stone are the microworms. Let's see if we see any of the fry come off the sand bed and into the water column to feed. They're kind of just hugging the sand bed. Not doing much. Some might be having a bit of a feed. It's hard to tell. They're not really coming off the sand bed all too much. There's mum. But I figured, see she's looking at her babies there. But I figured I may as well put some food in this tank for the fry just in case some of them want to eat. I'm also going to put in some baby brine shrimp just to make sure they're getting enough food seeing as again it looks like they've all absorbed their yolk sac I can't see it anymore. A couple fry still attached to the underside of that cave where the female's blocking right now so let's see if we can get them on the camera Yeah, you can kind of see them there. Yep, wriggling around. So some of the fry definitely are late developers, I suppose, and still are absorbing their yolk sac. But yeah, you can definitely see fry in the sand bed, uh, kind of following their mum towards the safety of the cave. Hey guys, it's been three days now since these guys have absorbed their yolk sac. Just turn the light on. You can see them on the sand bed, all hopping around. All those little pairs of eyes looking back at me. <laughs> and there are heaps over here as well. Now, over the next few minutes, these guys will just go underneath that cave with their mum uh, for shelter. As I've kind of uh, startled them by turning the light on. So you can see, she's trying to get them corralled near her. And uh, they don't like the light, but I need to get them used to a day-night cycle. I'll get used to this. Now, what I'm going to do is pop in some live microworms, give them a bit of a feed, and at this young age, I try to feed them two to three times a day, just to give them a good, healthy start. And here are the fry feeding off some live microworms. You can see them picking at stuff in the water column. Heaps of fry there. The wiggling microworms really attracts the attention of the fry. Good to feed them live food at this stage. Okay guys, the next day I just fed these baby Neolampologus thalupi some microworms, live microworms. You can see they're swimming in the water column. It's the first day I've really noticed them hanging out in the water column and uh, spending some time in it while they're feeding. So. They're pretty much now in the free swimming stage, easily in the free swimming stage. They are a little spooked when I get close with the camera to film them, but uh, as you can see, they're getting more and more adventurous, coming out further and further from their mother's cave, and that's really nice to see. So there are loads of fry in here, but I'm still yet to see the true amount of fry that this one spawn has yielded. And as you can see there are a ton of fry in this aquarium, really pleased about that. It's probably their largest spawn to date and yeah I can't be happier with this breeding pair. And here are the Leilupi fry now, 40 days after they were born. See the size they've put on, they're starting to push one centimetre here. And there are heaps in this tank.
Now, you see the females at the back of the tank, and there's the male, obviously they don't, they don't look this orange, this camera, I've said it multiple times in this video, uh, it saturates yellow coloration, but you see the female at the back there, uh, they spawned the other day, and I'm hoping that the fry have survived, I think they have, uh, sometimes uh, that female doesn't identify her older generation of fry as a threat to the new spawn and she's let them eat the younger babies but I'm hoping this time she uh, identified the older fry as a threat and protected her younger fry so you can see her darting back to that cave there so she's still tending to those fry there so they've spawned again within 40 days but there you go guys 43 days altogether from the moment they spawned to the day I'm filming this footage right now. I'm talking about two to three days to hatch. So these fry are 40 days old. So there you have it guys, the Neolamprologus Lelupi spawn and their progression. I really hope you enjoyed that video and found it informative. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and consider subscribing to the channel. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.